once you filter through that noise, the discrepancies that are left could be potential uh, rootkit cloaked uh, files and, and directories that weren't visible when the system was online. Rootkit Revealer, which I wrote with Bryce, takes a different approach. Because rebooting a machine to do this kind of scan is kind of a pain, we're trying to approach it from the online point of view, which is a very difficult game to play because they can be circumvented, like I'm going to show you. But Rootkit Revealer does a scan of the file system and registry at the highest API level, at the very highest top level. No rootkit's going to be any higher than that, of course, because it's sitting right next to a rootkit revealer, that API level. And then it does a scan at the very lowest level, which is looking at the raw file system data structures and the raw registry hive data. It compares the two, and differences are, pro are cloaked pieces of code. Either that or things that have changed between the two scans. So there can be some false positives here as well. Now what I'm going to show you is a demo of Hacker Defender in action followed by Rootkit Revealer and taking a look at what's going on. Actually, let me, I need to get back into Hacker Defender mode here. What I'm going to show you when this VM finishes resuming is I've got a folder open to Hacker Defender's installation. And what I've done is gone to rootkit.com, downloaded the publicly available hackerdefender.exe zip file which comes with a .any file bundled within it. That .any file, a um, hacker would configure to specify what kinds of things they want cloaked. Now, Holy Father, the guy that made Hacker Defender, and his name is a little ironic, I think, he's made this default .any file possible, uh, made it so you can just use Hacker Defender out of the box and cloak anything with the words hxdef100 uh, HX in it, which would cloak Hacker Defender's default executable image. So there's Hacker Defender's installation directory with the any file and the exe file. You can see it right here in the directory listing. I'm going to double click it to execute it. So now it's installing itself. Now I'm going to do a refresh with process in uh, Explorer here. Oh, actually I didn't even need to. It's gone. It's really there, but Explorer can't see it anymore. And in Task Manager, that process is really running and it should show up here in between E and L, because it begins with H, and it's not in that list. Uh, here's one, uh, actually, so what I'm going to do next is take you to another VM where I've done a rootkit revealer scan of the machine. I'm going to show you what rootkit revealer would say at this point. Now this whole cat and mouse game, I'm going to go ahead and talk to the next slide that comes after this demo is one that's going back and forth like a ping pong game right now. Hacker Defender, well actually not even Hacker Defender, some of the people using Hacker Defender to cloak their malware within a, two weeks of Rootkit Revealer coming out had already attacked it directly because that's a vulnerability of all Rootkit detectors is that the hacker, the Rootkit people out there, if they see something that's going to be looking for them, they can try to attack it. I'll uh, describe that when I finish showing you here what Revealer's output has. These are all of the registry keys up here at the top where Hacker Defender has configured not only a driver but a service to run at the next boot. These, this driver and this service would not be visible using any, any of the Windows diagnostic utilities. The uh, Service Control Manager would not show these things. And down here, here's the Hacker Defender exe that we saw and here's the any file that we saw. And again, Rootkit Revealer seeing that as discrepancies differences between the high-level scan and low-level scan. So Hacker Defender has been removing itself from the high-level scan. Rootkit Revealer shows you that hidden from Windows API. There's other ways, other side effects, other holes in Hacker Defender's cloaking. Here's another one. This is WinDebug, which is part of Microsoft's debugging tools for Windows. It's a kernel mode, end user mode debugger. And what I've done here is set it up to do local kernel debugging of a live system. So this lets me examine the state of the system. It lets me examine the kernel mode data structures of the live machine. And I'm going to do a, a process listing inside this tool, which is a bang process, 0, 0, that exclamation point in wind debug terminology is bang. And here at the bottom, near the bottom, is hxdef100.exe. So that is clear evidence that this process really is running on this machine right now. It's just not visible through the Windows tools.
So like I said, the hackers have already attacked Rootkit Revealer. Believe it or not, the first attack was so simple, it was pretty clever, actually. Rootkit Revealer is going to be looking for discrepancies between the high-level scan and the low-level scan, low scan. Why don't we just give it the same view as the malware? So now, you know how easy that is? Go into this any file, add Rootkit Revealer to the list of processes that are marked as root processes, as ones that shouldn't have a cloaked view of the system. Now Rootkit Revealer does its scan of the its high level scan, does a low level scan, sees the same thing in both scans, doesn't show you any discrepancies. PSS actually got any file submitted by customers with Rootkit Revealer in it in this way. So Bryce and I went back and modified Rootkit Revealer to give it a random name, install itself as a randomly named service, and stripped out strings. We pack it the same way that malware packs itself to try to remove evidence of the of its purpose. Because what the malware people are going to do is try to go after the strings, just like we saw earlier. Look for sys internals. Look for root hit revealer. It's a game that neither side can win. And in fact, Holy Father today claims that he's got a version of Hacker Defender called the gold version, which he sells. And I think starting price is something like 50 euros. And it goes up to like 300, depending on what root kit detectors you want to be immune from. And he shows a video, which you can get to from his website of him installing Hacker Defender and having it cloaked, be cloaked from all of the rootkit detectors that are on the market today, including Rootkit Revealer. Bryce and I are about to release another version of Rootkit Revealer, which we think might bypass his detection mechanism. But you can see this is a game I've been playing for quite a while. Now, what do you do if you do come up with some kind of belief that you've got a rootkit on your machine? Guess what the answer is? If you're not going to like it, reinstall totally flatten the system. If a, unless, of course, there's one exception to that. PSS tells you exactly what to do to clean the thing off. Because PSS, they know everything. No, I'm just kidding. If, if, uh, th no, I'm not kidding about them knowing everything. I'm kidding about the fact that you should, uh, that if somebody reputable comes along, an antivirus vendor, an antivirus vendor, Microsoft comes along and says, yeah, we've, uh, we've looked at your machine. We know what's on there. We know how to clean it off. That's the only case where you should not resort to scrubbing the machine altogether. Because once a rootkit gets on your machine, you can't trust the machine. You're looking at a modified view of things. And you don't know, when you look at a machine that's been compromised in that way, what holes you're missing. There's actually, in, in uh, products that I'm not going to mention, one of the rootkit detectors, that, uh, something called rename, a functionality where it says it does a scan kind of like rootkit revealer, and then we'll offer to rename the discrepancy, the files that show up as discrepancies at the next reboot. Do not trust that. That is the worst thing I think they could be doing, is to lead, give you a false sense of security. Because they might have only detected part of the rootkit, not all of it. So they're renaming part of it. Not only that, but the rootkit people are saying, look at these guys. They're putting this rename feature. Well, we'll put in rename countermeasures and get around that rename. The final topic, which I'm going to just gloss over pretty quickly here, is running as non-admin. There's a lot of reasons why you should run as non-admin, or have at least your users, end users run as non-admin if you absolutely all possibly can. The big one is that if the machine, if the account is compromised, and you're running as a non-admin, you've compromised only that account. If you've been compromised and you've got any kind of admin privilege on that machine at all, you've compromised the whole box. So rootkits, while they can still infect a user account, you can still have one of these rootkits get into a user account so when that user runs task manager, they don't see the malware. Or do it or they don't see the malware. If you log in then, log out and log back in as an admin, you will have the full clean view of the system. The ideal rootkit detector will be a, a combination of antivirus and anti-rootkit detection. To detect the rootkits that don't have signatures through the scans, and when they do see the stuff sitting there on the disk, they do antivirus scans to see, look for signatures for rootkits and malware. A warning, do not trust the power users group, which a lot of people fall back on as a kind of easy way to say that they're running as non-admin. There are holes in the power user group se uh, security settings on the default Windows installation that somebody malicious can poke a hole through to get themselves elevated to admin. Of course, the cons of running as non-admin is it makes a lot of system tasks harder. And if you want to